welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. You are in store for another weekly WW meal prep. This week I made three absolutely delicious meals. I made a breakfast, a lunch, and an amazing fall inspired sweet treat that is incredibly low points for what it is. So if you want to see what I have in store for this week's WW weekly meal prep, just stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, I'm going to be making a biscuit egg casserole. This sounds so delicious and perfect for the change of weather. So let me show you what is in my breakfast. You're going to need some milk or milk alternative. I'm going to be using the silk cashew milk, the 90 calorie reduced fat crescent rolls, Jimmy Dean fully cooked turkey sausage crumbles, salt and pepper, eggs, and I'm going to do two kinds of cheese. I'm going to do half of the Trader Joe's light Mexican blend, and then I'm going to do half of my fat-free cheddar. So let's get started on my biscuit egg casserole. So the first thing I did is sprayed my 9 by 13 pan with some non-stick cooking spray. We're going to take our roll of our crescents, and we're going to unroll it, try to keep it the best that you can in a single sheet, because we are going to lay that in the bottom of our 9 by 13 pan and we want to get the bottom completely covered with our biscuit dough this is going to be the base of our casserole you can use biscuits as well i just found that these rolls these crescent rolls that are reduced fat were less points and this can be a pretty point heavy breakfast if you use regular biscuits so i do highly recommend the crescent rolls so just get those nicely lined in the bottom of your baking dish once you have your crescent rolls down, we're going to go ahead and take your entire package of your Jimmy Dean sausage crumbles and we're going to sprinkle those all over the bottom and then we're going to top our sausage crumbles with our cheese. Next we're going to mix eight eggs into a medium sized bowl. We're gonna go ahead and get those cracked. To that, we're gonna add our milk and our salt and our pepper. So let's get our eight eggs cracked into our bowl. Once you have your eight eggs cracked into your bowl, we're gonna add one cup of milk and I am using again the cashew milk from Silk. I don't notice a difference in eggs, you guys, at all. And then I'm also going to add in some salt and pepper. And we like a lot of pepper, so you're going to see me add in quite a bit. I always recommend that you do this part to your taste buds. And then I always add just a little bit of salt just because it does bring out the flavor. And then we are going to whisk this together until all the milk and the eggs are nice and combined. We are going to pour our egg mixture over the sausage, biscuit, and cheese mixture. Try to get your egg mixture as evenly as possible over the top. That is what is not only going to bind your recipe together, but you wanna make sure that you're getting an equal number of eggs each day, just so that your points are pretty accurate. I know eggs are zero, but we still wanna make sure that we're getting our serving sizes as equal as possible. So that looks pretty darn good. So there is our biscuit casserole before it goes into the oven. 350 degrees, depending on your oven, for 25 to 30 minutes. So I'll be back when this comes out of the oven. Here is the biscuit egg casserole. You guys, look at this. Look at how delicious that looks. So I'm going to allow it to rest for about five minutes per the recipe to give it a chance to kind of finish its cooking process. It holds together a little bit better when you cut it. I'm gonna cut this into eight servings. This recipe makes eight servings. Put it in my meal prep container and I'll be back to show you a serving and give you the smart points for my breakfast. So here is my breakfast for the week. You can see I ran out of grapes. So one of my days I'm gonna be having an apple instead. But let's take a look at this. I showed you that picture, you guys, yum. This smells amazing, looks amazing. You have biscuits, you have cheese, you have sausage. Absolutely delicious, satisfying, comforting breakfast. You can have one eighth of the biscuit 
a casserole for six smart points. So that's not bad considering you have your starch and everything in one casserole. And then of course, I'm just gonna pair that with a fruit for zero. So my entire breakfast is only six smart points. For my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making a Weight Watchers chicken enchilada bake. This sounds so good and the points are fantastic on this. Should be filling, flavorful, and delicious. So let me show you what is in our enchilada bake. You're gonna need some taco seasoning, enchilada sauce, Las Palmas, if you can find this in your area, is the lowest points that I've been able to find and it's really, really good. So if you can find this brand of enchilada sauce, you'll save yourself some points. Fat-free refried beans, Rotel, black beans, Mission Extra Thin and Crispy Tortillas. Cheese of your choice, I'm gonna be doing the Trader Joe's Extra Light Mexican Blend. And then of course you're going to need some chicken. So let's get started on our enchilada bake. So the first thing for our enchiladas is we need to get our chicken cut up. I'm gonna remove all the fat and we're gonna dice it into small pieces, put it here in a bowl. And we're gonna get this cooked up before we start assembling our enchiladas. We need to cook our chicken for our enchiladas. So you can see here that I diced up both of those chicken breasts. They were really fatty. That's why I prefer the Costco chicken. This is just the frozen thin slice from Fred Meyer. Not as high quality of chicken. So I had to remove a lot of the fat, but I'm gonna get these just fried up. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper and call it good. So let's get this chicken cooked so we can assemble our enchiladas. So let's get started on our enchiladas. So I have my nine by 13 pan that I sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. In the bottom, I'm going to put about one third of the enchilada sauce, and I am just going to get it spread around because that is your base of your enchiladas. And then I have four and a half of my extra thin tortillas. We are going to lay these in the bottom as evenly as we can. We just want to make sure that the bottom gets pretty darn covered with the tortilla. So that's about as good as we're going to get for that. And then we're going to mix together our refried beans and our taco seasoning. Next, we're going to take our can of refried beans and we're going to go ahead and add it to a bowl and get that kind of spread out a little bit because we are going to add our taco seasoning directly here to our refried beans. And we want the equivalent of about one package of taco seasoning. I just buy the big one at Costco because it's so inexpensive. I mean, really, I think it's like $5 for that huge container. So we want to get this mixed together. Make sure your taco sauce is mixed in pretty well. Your taco seasoning, I'm sorry, is mixed in pretty darn well with your refried beans. And then we're going to go ahead and set that aside because we're going to add that into our enchilada bake. But there is our refried beans with the taco seasoning. We are going to take the refried bean mixture and we are going to do our best. So I would probably hold your tortilla if you can. And we're going to spread this as evenly as we can over our tortillas in the bottom here of our baking dish. So just do your best to kind of spread it around. It's a little challenging because the tortillas want to move because of the sauce in the bottom, but just do your best to spread your refried bean mixture out over the tortillas. Once you've put your refried beans in the bottom of your pan over your tortillas, that looks so good. We are gonna go ahead and mix together our black beans. I did drain them and put them directly into our bowl. To that, we are going to add our diced cooked chicken and just kind of give that a preliminary stir because we do want to get everything nice and mixed together. We are also going to add in the remaining of our enchilada sauce, what we didn't use in the bottom of the pan. Give that again another quick mix. And then we're also going to add in our can of Rotel. And we're gonna mix that in. And then this is the next layer of our enchilada bake. We are going to put one half of this mixture kind of over the top of our refried beans. We're layering this because this is an enchilada bake, so it's going to have a couple of layers. So one half of the mixture over the refried beans. 
Once you have half the mixture over the bean mixture, we are going to take the other four corn tortillas, four and a half, I'm sorry, and we're gonna layer those also in the bottom of our pan, again, the best that we can. I think that it would be better if you kind of broke them in half like I am here, and that way it kind of covers it a bit more, but that's perfect. And then we're gonna add the other half of the enchilada mixture to the top of these. And then the last step is adding on our cheese. And the last step is one cup of the Trader Joe's shredded Mexican blend. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that over the top and then this is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and of course that is going to depend on your oven i get a lot of questions on cooking time and everybody's oven varies i have a convection oven so mine is going to vary from someone who doesn't have a convection oven so just cook it to the temperature that your oven needs and the time that your oven needs to get this cooked completely through so i'm going to pop this in the oven i'll be back to show you our completed chicken enchilada bake our chicken enchilada bake is out of the oven you guys this looks so good my house smells amazing look at that yum so i'm gonna let this rest for just a few minutes we'll get it cut up into the meal prep container and i'll be back to show you what i'm having for lunch and give you the smart points so here are my lunches for the week so this is what i'm going to be having in my container i have one sixth of the chicken enchilada bake you guys you can have one sixth of this for only four smart points that is a huge serving it completely fills the large side of my meal prep container and it's four points isn't that crazy yum you can add a little bit of sour cream for an extra point or some non-fat greek yogurt for no extra points i am probably going to just add a little bit of non-fat greek yogurt to mine for no additional smart points and then of course i'm having some veggies i get a lot of questions on my favorite vegetables these are them these are the flavor pack grande classics these are the large cut vegetables and this is the northwest blend so it's broccoli carrots green beans yellow carrots wax beans and red peppers and i love this brand of vegetables. You can see that they are whole, yummy vegetables. They taste so fresh and delicious. So I'm gonna have some of those with some spray butter, salt and pepper for zero. And then my second fruit of the day, I got pears. I don't know what it was, but I was craving some pears. So I picked up a pear. And then of course I'm gonna have for dessert, these are the peanut butter cup choco ripe patties. You can have two patties or one entire package for two smart points. Basically, you guys, you get two Reese's peanut butter cups for two points. Cannot beat it, cannot beat it. You can pick these up either off of the Protein Wise website. There is a link down below for $10 off, or you can also get these on Nutrition's website. So if you're heading over there to pick up the Fiber Gourmet Pasta or the Thinnables or any of the hundreds of WW products on Nutrition's website, you can order these as part of your order there as well. Use the link in the description box for Nutrition. It'll take you right to the where you need to be. Check out all the WW products. So two points for that, four points for my chicken enchilada bake. That makes my lunch a total of six smart points. For a sweet treat this week, I'm gonna be making a WW friendly apple crisp. Tis the season, guys, for apple crisp. I love cobbler's crisps, but they're generally so high in smart points that I was excited to be able to find a recipe that I could modify and make it delicious and WW friendly. So let me show you what is in our apple cobbler. You're going to need a sugar alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using this stevia in the raw, all-purpose flour, a brown sugar alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be doing sucre and gold. I buy my sucre and gold off of the Nutrition website. I find it to be the least expensive there and I can buy the large bag for less than half of the price of the small bag sometimes. You can find the Nutrition link down in the description box. Click the link, it'll take you to the site. Have a good time looking around you guys. There's hundreds of WW friendly products on that site. I love it so much. So I'm doing the sucre and gold. You'll need some oats salt, vanilla, I'm gonna do vanilla bean paste. You can also just do vanilla extract, cinnamon, light butter, apples, 
And then I'm gonna be using this sugar-free apple cider mix in place of orange juice or apple cider because this is zero points. So it's gonna save me a little bit of points in the end. So that's everything that's in our apple crisp. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do for our apple crisp is peel and slice our apples. We want these to be sliced very thinly, not more than about a quarter of an inch thick. So let's get peeling and slicing so we can get making some apple crisp. here in a bowl I did add a little bit of water about a tablespoon only because I'm not using apple juice or orange juice I'm using the cider packet so I wanted a little bit of liquid so to my apples I'm going to add my two tablespoons of all-purpose flour I'm going to add my one third cup of stevia baking mix I'm gonna add my little pouch of sugar-free apple cider some cinnamon and I don't measure as you know and I love cinnamon so the more the merrier and then I'm going to do a little bit of vanilla bean paste about a teaspoon instead of vanilla bean or I'm sorry instead of vanilla extract so then we're just going to take a spoon and we're just going to mix this together until it's all nice and combined and then we're just going to set this aside while we put together the oat portion of our apple crisp now let's put together our topping for our apple crisp. So in a bowl here, I'm going to add two thirds cup of oats. I know this is a large bowl, but in meal prep, all my bowls get dirty. So this is what we're going with. So two thirds cup of oats. I have two thirds cup of my sucrine brown sugar. I also have two thirds cup of all purpose flour. And I'm going to give this just kind of a quick stir just to, I like to do that as I'm making my dishes, kind of combine everything before all the ingredients get added, just makes it a little bit easier. We're also going to add in some cinnamon and of course, per the usual, I'm not going to measure. I'm just gonna add that in. We're gonna add a little bit of salt because that just enhances the flavor of everything. And then lastly, we're gonna add in one half of a cup of the I Can't Believe It's Not Butter Light, and that is melted. So we're gonna add in that, give this another quick stir. Oh, you guys, look at this. And my friends, we have a delicious buttery, cinnamony, sugary topping to go on our apple crisp. So let me grab out my pan and let's put this together. Go ahead and take your baking dish. Mine here is about a nine by nine, or I'm sorry, this is an eight by eight, but you can really use a nine by nine or a pie dish, whatever your preference is. And we're gonna take that delicious apple mixture that's been sitting aside. Oh my goodness, you guys, yum. And we are just going to put this into the bottom of our pan. And there's a little bit of juices that have kind of accumulated as it's been sitting and you want to make sure you add all of that as well and then go ahead and spread that out as evenly as you can into the bottom of your pan oh my goodness oh i'm seriously so excited about this i love apples but i love apples and cinnamon but i love love apple crisp or any type of crisp or cobbler oh, Yum, my very favorite dessert, you guys, hands down. So there is the apples in the bottom of our pan. Doesn't that look yummy? From here, we're going to take this crumble mixture and we are gonna dive in with our hands. So make sure your hands are nice and clean and we are going to dive in and we're gonna take this crumb mixture and we're literally just going to sprinkle it with our hands over the top of our apples until it's fully covered in this delicious buttery sugary cinnamony crumble so get that put over the top of your apples look at this apple crisp just look at it it's beautiful so i went ahead and kind of pushed it down with my hands i have a piece of foil here that i've lined or i'm sorry i've sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray per the recipe and it says to loosely cover so not like, you know, really, really push it down, but loosely cover this. This is going to go into the oven 
covered for about 20 minutes and then we're going to remove the foil put it back into the oven for an additional 25 to 35 minutes and again based on your oven i'm going to be cooking mine at 350 degrees here is our apple crisp you guys my house now smells entirely like a delicious fall day it smells so good in here so i'm going to let this rest and cool for a little bit we'll cut it into serving sizes and i'll be back to show you our completed crisp and give you the smart points so i cut my apple crisp into six servings this is one sixth of the recipe now you can cut it into five, four servings if you would rather so i'll go ahead and give you the smart points for both but this you guys is really really good so this is one sixth of the apple crisp one sixth is only three smart points now if you decided to go ahead and cut your crisp into four servings it's only five smart points for one fourth of this pan so i did the six servings so this delicious helping of apple crisp is only three smart points here is what i'm bringing for my snacks this week so I always have a snack in the morning and I have a snack in the afternoon. So my morning snack is always a Built Bar. As you know, this is what I have every morning as my snack. But today I have a very special Built Bar to share with you. So we're gonna save that for last. So my Built Bars, they are three smart points a piece with the exception of the peanut butter, which is amazing. It is four smart points, but like I said, I would give an extra point for peanut butter any day of the week but these bars are amazing. They are full of protein. So here are your macros, 110 calories, 15 grams of protein, six fiber, four sugar, four fat. You guys, you can't beat it. They are full of protein, full of fiber. They keep you full and they literally taste like a candy bar. There is no other protein bar on the market that tastes like a candy bar. So this week I'm going to be having the mocha chocolate cream. So if you love coffee and chocolate, this is the bar for you. It is delicious. I also love the black cherry chocolate. This one is really, really good as well. It tastes like those delicious chocolate covered cherries. This is one of my favorites, the Mint Brownie Delight. It actually used to be my very favorite, you guys, until the new flavor that I'm gonna share shortly came out, which is now my new favorite. This one is good. It is a gooey, gooey brownie center with a hint of mint. And then I love the banana chocolate. This tastes like a chocolate-covered banana from your local fair. It is so good. But the star of the show is the brand new flavor of Built Bar, just released today my friends and it is coconut almond and you guys if you love almond joys no lie this is an almond joy this is a freaking almond joy for 130 calories with 18 grams of protein seven grams of fiber only three sugar and five grams of fat and three smart points it is a three smart point almond joy so so good so here's the deal with this new flavor so as of today so the 31st of, or I'm sorry, the 21st of October, this goes on sale. I'm going to put all of the details on the screen here for you. But with every full box purchase, no matter what flavor you buy, a mixed box, a single flavor, a build your own box, you're going to receive two free coconut almond bars. You can even order these by the full box, you guys. And I recommend it. Again, if you love almond joys, if you love coconut, just get a full box. You will not be sorry. You will also receive six packets of the brand new Built Boost, which is a vitamin packed water enhancer. They are delicious. Absolutely delicious. So incredibly good. On the next screen after this, I will show you what they look like. They're so good, you guys, and they have a great flavor, no aftertaste, and they're full of vitamins. So a good alternative to add to your water uh, if you can't drink plain water or you just like a little bit of flavoring. So definitely pick up this bar. You guys are going to love it. The promotion is only a few days, so don't miss out. So my morning snack, as always, is a Built Bar. My afternoon snack this week is going to be a pumpkin pie light and fit Greek yogurt. This is one of my very, very favorite flavors. And I'm going to top that yogurt with the Julian Bakery Pro Granola in Vanilla Cluster. So here's your stats. 83 calories, 12 grams of protein, 2 grams net carbs, 15 fiber, and 0 sugar. This particular one is also vegan because it is made with a plant 
protein. So I'm going to literally put just a tiny bit of this on top of my yogurt for zero points. However, you can have an entire half of a cup of the pro granola for two smart points. Best granola on the market, you guys. My code is here on the screen. It'll give you 10% off and free shipping. And there's a link down in the description box that takes you to Julian Bakery directly. It is cheaper through their website with my code. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to top my yogurt here with just a tiny bit of the pro granola. So my yogurt afternoon snack, two smart points. So that is what I'm taking for snacks for the upcoming week. <laughs> me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three recipes that I prepared for you today. My breakfast, I'm so excited about. My enchilada casserole is so good. And let me just tell you how amazing that apple crisp is. So good. I can't believe you can have one fourth of the pan for five points or one sixth for three. It's crazy to me. Again, it's one of my favorite desserts and it's generally extremely point heavy. So I was really excited to be able to take that recipe and modify it and make it friendly for us. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I would love it if you're new, if you would subscribe to my channel, join my YouTube friends and family, hit that little notification bell so you're notified when I upload. Please thumbs up this video. These thumbs up help my channel so much, you guys. Comment down below. Not only does that help my channel, but it allows me to interact and talk with you guys. I absolutely love reading your comments. Make sure you check out the description box for all of the recipes, as well as all of my discount codes, including the ones that I showed you today. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed the three recipes, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.